Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be on isentropic flow. So in light of the new nozzle experiments, uh, which you can read in the description down below or at csdesign.space, uh, I've gotten a few requests to talk about what isentropic flow actually means. It's a term that actually appears literally everywhere uh, when you talk about rocket propulsion systems uh, and fluid dynamics. Um, so I'm gonna talk about it briefly here. Again, make sure you do read the new research report, uh, as well as a report that we actually didn't end up releasing until recently uh, on regression rates. Uh, so you can find that in the description below. So isentropic flow, in its most basic sense, is defined as flow uh, with constant entropy. In other words, there is no change in entropy, or the change in entropy is just zero. And the second law of thermodynamics, uh, a system with no change in entropy is also reversible. Here, and I quote, the system and surroundings can be returned to the original conditions from the final state without producing any change in the thermodynamic properties of the universe, end quote. In subsonic flow, the mass flow rate, which you can see in the equation right here, as I discussed before, uh, remains conserved. This creates a reversible system by allowing the velocity and area to go back to the, uh, their initial values after a change to the system. However, as the fluid approaches the local speed of sound in the converging section, this assumption begins to break down. This is because the fluid ends up becoming choked uh, and the mass flow is not conserved, hence the entropy changes. However, in the diverging section, despite the flow being supersonic, uh, the mass flow rate is conserved, hence the entropy does not change. Since no exhaust flow in this experiment exceeds uh, supersonic flow in the converging section or experiences shock waves in the diverging section, uh, this assumption actually remains valid for this experiment, which permits the use of the equations uh, I talked about previously with the expansion ratio. So why is this exactly important? It allows for the derivation of all the equations uh, I discussed in the previous video. In other words, when you are doing the derivation for velocity, temperature, pressure, and all the other variables, uh, making the assumption that there is no change in variables, i.e. Uh, delta S is equal to zero, makes all the derivations of the equations much simpler to do. And by simpler, I mean significantly easier. A few videos uh, where I think Josh the engineer uh, does this, and I've linked that in the description down below if you want to see the derivation. Anyways, hopefully this video has given you some basic insight into what isentropic flow is and how it's useful. And as I said before, if you have not done already, please, please, please read our new report at csi.space or in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.